Let's bring in another uh, PIMCO chief economist. Uh, Paul McCauley uh, teaches at uh, Georgetown's McDonough School of yeah, Business. Does. Paul, it's great to have you. Uh, I think your, your general take is that tomorrow will bring a so-called valedictory speech. Can you talk about what that means? I think the, the Fed chair is going to say that policy is in a good place, a dramatically better place than he was a year ago. Most significantly, policy is restrictive. Real interest rates are positive and are rising, including at the back end of the curve. So you're in a good place with restrictive monetary policy, and inflation is coming down. So I think he's going to signal that we're in the end game of this tightening process. He's not going to declare that uh, we're finished, uh, but he's going to declare that we're in the end game, that we're fine tuning. And then his big message is we're going to stay restrictive until inflation comes down meaningfully. So he's going to shift his, uh, his viewpoint from short term tactics to more of a strategic view of we're going to stay restrictive until inflation and or the labor market cries uncle. I was going to say, so if you've gone from nine to three with virtually no labor pain, is the message going to be we're going to get it from nine to two with a little labor pain? Yeah, I think that's fair. I don't think he's going to pound the table about that. He's going to reinforce the notion that two is still very much the target. He's going to reinforce the notion he wants to see more softening in the labor market. Uh, so, yeah, I think uh, uh, your take on it is is pretty good. Paul, Georgetown is lucky to have Professor. you. We've said that. Let me, <laughs> but I'll say this. There's this belief, I think it's misguided, that beginning of next year, February of next year, we're talking about rate cuts. Under what set of circumstances are there rate cuts in the beginning of next year? And if there are, in my opinion, it's because something broke. I don't think you can get too early in the year for a cut on the inflation side of things. I think you'd have to get there on unexpected weakness in the real economy and particularly unexpected weakness in the labor market. So I don't think it's inflation that would get you there. It would be the labor market. Uh, and I don't have uh, a sense that that's what's going to happen. I think we're going to slow in the labor market as we have been slowing. But something precipitous, I don't think, uh, is in the cards. Uh, so I really think that the key issue for a cut is later in the year when real rates are going up because nominal rates are steady and inflation keeps moving down. Some would call that a passive tightening, which would be unwarranted if it's happening because inflation is coming down. So I think that's the scenario uh, he probably will articulate. Uh, it will not be a scenario of an early ease uh, on inflation data but you would get an early ease, obviously, if the labor market fell out of bed, which I do not expect. So, Professor Hoya, this is Tim. Based upon all those things you've just said, and you were formerly a, a major, you know, swinging the bond market around at PIMCO, certainly one of the biggest bond shops in the world. Uh, would this be a time for asset allocators to be pushing out the yield curve on the fixed income market, collecting some of these yields, locking in, avoiding uh, reinvestment risk in terms of interest rates that uh, aren't going to collapse? But, but isn't this a decent time for investors to take advantage where they can move up the credit curve, but they can push out the duration curve? And I don't want to get too wonky. The bottom line is it may be time to be investing in high yield fixed income or the higher yielding fixed income markets. I'm not so sure about increasing duration. I would be around neutral relative to a benchmark. Uh, but to be wonk with you, I think the bigger issue is that a barbell of cash and effectively the very long end has been very successful, as it always is in a tightening campaign. And I think it's we're coming to the point where you need to sell barbells into bullets and focus your duration exposure in the belly of the curve between three and seven years.